Hey Logo Designers, this is Michael from Logo Package. Welcome to another devlog for Logo Package Forge, our upcoming extension for Adobe Illustrator that allows you to organize your fonts inside of Illustrator and then rapidly generate logo type concepts with those fonts. Today I'm just going to jump right into the newest, most exciting feature that we have implemented for Logo Package Forge. This feature is all about font pairing which is something that people often do in design to see how two different fonts might look together in a logo or sometimes even for typesetting headlines and body copy on websites and in print materials. So I'm just going to get right into an example here. Um, we're going to make a logo. So I'm in the logo type tab of Logo Package Forge and I'm just going to do two lines here and the first line I'm just going to have play and the second line is going to be station. And we're going to use the feature that we've shown in previous devlogs of targeting a type line. This allows me to say, I want this word in the logo type or in the type set to be a specific font. So I'm gonna choose a set. I'm going to choose the old school set. And then I can choose any font from the old school set. So let's go with Times New Roman. And then I will choose a set that is going to be paired with that font. So Times New Roman is the target font for the word play. And then the set that station is going to be is chosen from this dropdown. So I'm going to compare that with New School. So what we should see is play set in the Times New Roman font from the old school set and then station set in all of the fonts from the new school set. I'm going to change this to a horizontal alignment because I want to see these words next to each other. And these, even though they're two type lines, I want them to be one word. So the gap setting between these two lines of type is going to be zero. The last thing I want to do is change play to a nice blue. And now I'm ready to make logos. Let's see what happens. All right, so we have a nice column of logo types here to look at. We get the Times New Roman font paired with all of the fonts in the new school set. So let's look through these. I think that what you're going to be looking for in a situation like this is similar X heights, but of course this type is all editable meaning if you need to change the scale of something, you know, it's totally possible to just come in and make that look how you want it to look. But really we're just using Logo Package Forge to quickly prototype and get an idea for the right direction. So I see that these fonts have a similar X height, which is pretty cool. That looks all right. And then I see that probably the next best match is Times New Roman and Futura here. So now maybe I want to see a different old school font paired with all of the new school fonts. So I can do that very easily. I just come back to the target here and instead of Times New Roman, so I need to choose the old school set. And now I can pick any of the fonts from there. I want to see this in Fat Fatface. So I'll just click make logos again. And now we can see what all of the new school fonts look like paired with a different old school font. So let's take a look here at how Avril Fatface came out. So again, I'm looking for similar X heights, but you can edit anything that you want. Futura still looks pretty good with this, um, but you can do this as many times as you want and get as many pairings as you want, and you can switch between sets and target fonts. But this would be for a situation where you want to have two contrasting fonts and see what they look like paired together. Another example might be that you want to see what all of the different combinations in a single typeface might result in. So let's see how we can do that using Logo Package Forge. Now I want to see this in all caps. So I'm going to type in play in all caps and station in all caps. Um, and I don't want the blue to be distracting me. I just want to see the contrast in the weights. So I'll set this to black. 
And now I'm going to go to a set that I've created that is just one font. And that is the inter set. So I'm going to be looking at the inter font. And I want to see, let's say what inter black looks like with all of the other weights of inter. So then all I have to do is after I've selected play the target font to be in the specific font inter black, I will choose a set for it to be compared to, and I will choose the interset that I've created. And this is going to run through all of my chosen weights for inter and make all of those variations. So let's see how this turns out. All right, so now we have a new column that is showing us PlayStation in all caps and just using one font, but pairing it with the different weights of that font. And we can go through and see that some of these are pretty subtle. Some of them have nice contrast. And maybe we decide uh, we don't want the bold one to be in front. So let's just simply change the target font from enter V black to enter thin and make logos and see how this looks. Okay, now we have the thin font paired with all of the other weights. And I think that there's a lot more contrast here, and this is more interesting. So this is just a very rapid way to see this PlayStation logo concept in many different contrasting fonts and font pairings between totally different styles or between different weights within the same font. So this is a really cool thing that we can do with Logo Package Forge, and there's another use case that is pretty common for font pairing and it's not the primary intent or purpose for logo package forge to do type setting it's more specifically about logos but we can still use the features of logo package forge to check how different font pairings might work in a headline to body copy type relationship so let's take a look at how we could do that and what i'm going to do is i'm going to make let's say four lines and I'm going to change the first line to headline text and then I'm just going to use some filler copy here for the other lines. Now logo package will not wrap text so if you want to do multiple lines of text you'll have to add them manually to multiple lines instead of just typing in a whole lot of text. So now we have our target font is going to be our headline text and we want to see variations of body copy text. So for the headline, I'm going to choose a new school font. So I'll choose the new school set and then I'm going to see what this looks like with Gotham Black as my headline. And then I'm going to choose the old school set for the body copy. Okay, so we have some typesets here, and we can see that the headline text is Gotham Black like we chose, and then we can go through all of these different old school fonts, which are pretty much just serif fonts. Now, these lines are a little tight together, um, so I'd like to see if we can improve this, and I'm going to change the gap setting to something like 12 points. And now I'll make logos again, and we'll be able to very quickly iterate on this first concept. All right, so we have the new gap settings applied, and this is quite a bit easier to read and look at and get a good judgment for how these fonts are pairing with each other. Now, again, Logo Package Forge is focused on creating logo types, and this is an alternate way to use the extension there are no features and there are no planned features to be able to change the font size of a targeted line um, so that you could see, oh, I want my headlines to be 32 points and I want my body copy to be 10 points. Um, we're not going to get into that granularity because, again, this is a tool that is primarily for logos. But this is a very quick method to just kind of see how fonts relate to each other in more of a copywriting 
design layout as opposed to a logo layout. And now I want to show you a modification we've made to a feature that was discussed in previous devlogs and which we have used here, which is these target fonts and multi-line text. But we have implemented a new feature that allows you to target multiple lines at a time. Previously, you were only able to target one line, but there are many use cases where you may want to target multiple lines, and I'm going to show you an example of that now. Let's do something, maybe we wanna make a sticker design uh, about the world's greatest dad. So I'm going to type out worlds in the first line, and then the second line will be greatest. The next line will be father, and the last line will be award. Now, in this case, I would like greatest father to be a nice handwritten font. So I'm going to unclick target from worlds and target both greatest and father. Now, both of these target lines will get the same settings applied. You can't choose one target line for one font and choose a different font for another target line. But in this case, we're gonna go to the handwritten set and I wanna use uh, let's say Bradley hand and then I want worlds and award to go through all of the variations in the old school set and I think I would also like greatest dad to be red so I'm gonna pick a red color here and I'll copy the hex code click OK and I'll go to the father line and paste in that hex code click OK so now I should have black type, two lines of red type, and black type at the bottom, and I should have uh, all of the different old school fonts at the top and bottom with greatest father being in this Bradley hand bold font. So let's take a look at these generations. Okay, so now you can see that we have targeted the two middle lines and given them the same font, and then we are moving through all of the variations of the other old school fonts on the top and bottom lines or the untargeted lines. I think another thing I'd like to do with this is because it's going to be a sticker, I would like to see what this looks like with justified text. So all of the text lines being the same width. So I'll choose the justified alignment and I'm going to make logos again. Okay, so I think this is much better for a sticker. Everything is the same width, and I get to look at all of these different old school fonts paired with my handwritten font. So this is a powerful way to just target multiple lines of fonts. Previously, you could only target one line, making uh, a layout like we see here impossible to do. And I think this is a very common thing that people would want to create. So we implemented this modification to the feature. And the last update I want to show you is uh, another change that we made to the code to make outlier fonts work better in Logo Package Forge. Previously, the way that we aligned fonts was that we would take a type box and we would align the top of a lower type box to the bottom of a higher type box. You can see that this is point type, so this is just how the font renders in Illustrator. It has this very large box around it. So even though this gap setting was maybe only 20 points, to put 20 points gap between hello and world, this font is so tall that 20 points actually becomes a lot greater distance than that. So to fix that, instead of going from the bounds of the type box, we are now adding gap from the baseline of the font. So we can see there's this line that goes right along the bottom of all the letters. That's called the baseline. When we make this same variation aligning from the baseline, you see on the right here, we get a much better looking alignment. 
So now you can see that from the baseline to the top of world is how this is set up versus from the bottom of the type box to the top, the following type box. And that's just a little nitty gritty detail. These are the kinds of things we have to figure out as we are looking at edge cases. So this will be a much better solution and we are a lot happier with this than randomly getting uh, these super strangely spaced variations. And I think that about covers it for the devlog this week. Um, I'm really excited about the font pairing. I think that's going to be a huge feature of this extension and that a lot of people are going to use that feature all the time. Thanks for watching.